What's up guys? Protobro here, infamous brother to Megabro, and uh, I figured I'd uh, do a quick tutorial here on um, essentially how to use the artillery in Ultimate General Gettysburg. The reason I was doing that is I know when I was playing it I was having some difficulty kind of figuring out the best way to utilize it. Uh, I do not claim to be an expert. I'm still learning. So if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to throw them out there. Um, but I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I've learned from it. Um, so there's a couple of things I'm going to cover here. I'm going to cover moving artillery. I'm going to cover uh, kind of the best way to place artillery. And then we're going to talk about the different functions of artillery. So specifically suppression, counterfire, defensive uses of artillery, and then offensive uses of artillery. Uh, not necessarily in that order, but those are the things we're going to cover. So really quick here, let's focus on, on moving first. Um, actually, no, I'm going to focus on line of sight really quick. So first thing I want to focus on. Notice here how this all got uh, all got kind of cloudy. Not cloudy. Uh, yeah, I guess cloudy. Fog of war. Uh, this is essentially all that Reese can really kind of see right now. So he can kind of see Zook, but he can't really see these guys. He wouldn't actually be able to hit them. It's because if you hit M, give you landscape, these guys are kind of up a little bit up, and they're also uh, shielded, where he's, he's kind of down at the bottom here. So he's got some obstructions that are kind of keeping him from hitting these guys. So even though, as you can see, his range is all the way down here, he may actually not be able to hit the Irish Brigade. Uh, you can only kind of hit right here. Now you can... Um, maximize I guess or, or uh, kind of make it even more sensitive in the game to affect this so it's even more obvious to you what they can and can't see in the uh, the menu where uh, I think it's the latency or something like that which maybe I, you know, I could probably show you um, but this is the first thing I wanted to, to focus on and the reason it's important is for example like Harrington here you can see all these guys here uh, all the way down here even Webb because he's up here on this way elevated point so you could put him on solid shot and shoot this guy all the way down here. So that's just the first thing I wanted to cover. Uh, but really quick here, let's focus on moving first. There's two ways to move your artillery. So one is the way with which we're going to move Carter and Fry. And then the second's going to be the way we move Reese and Page. Okay. So first, Carter and Fry. What's going to happen is they're going to mount up on their cavalry and actually uh, be pulled back over to here and then reset up their artillery. Whereas Reese and Page are going to just push their artillery forward, which means that they'll remain active and engaged in the battle. So the best way I think to do this is if you have artillery that's not really in the fight because they're not in a good position, you might as well just get them back up and move them. Uh, whereas these two guys are clearly uh, in a position where they can be engaged in the battle. And so I just want to move them just a little bit so that they can kind of stay engaged in the battle, which I'll, I'll explain uh, shortly. So let's just do that first, so I can show you. So see how they're pushing forward, pushing forward. Whereas these guys over here are mounting up, and then they're going to move. See how much time it takes? I mean, whereas these guys can just start firing. All right. So that's the, the first thing you should know is, is moving. There's two different options there. This one's, uh, I think, a very handy one to have. Uh, now, placement artillery. So notice here with Carrington, he's up here on the top of this ridge at 508 feet above, I guess, I'm assuming sea level. Notice also his coverage is 73%. So this is like optimum area to put artillery. Because not only are you high up on the ground, but you also have your cover. So what cover does, obviously, is it... May, it decreases the number of casualties you'll suffer when fired upon. Um, but I think it also probably does amplify your condition morale too. I, I assume it probably your morale, just because you're not taking as many casualties and when someone shoots at you, you're just you know less likely to suffer any kind of injuries. Um, so when you're talking about placement of artillery, you ideally want it up on higher ground. Uh, another reason for that is if, for example, I were to take the Louisiana Tigers and push them through here. At some point, Garber and Carrington are going to stop firing. They're going to stop firing because they cannot shoot through their own guys. However, were I to take the Louisiana Tigers and put them right at the base of this ridge, these guys would probably still be able to fire because these guys are lower below Carrington and Garber. Um, so again, another reason why you want elevation for your artillery. Now, were I to take Gordon and put him in front of Page and Reese, protecting them from the fire of Zook and Arnold. The downside to that, or, or Daniels for example, the downside to that is that at some point Reese and Page are going to stop firing because Daniel, Reese, and Page are all at the same elevation. And so Reese and Page cannot shoot through 
Daniel. And so the only way that Reese and Paige can continue firing on the enemy is if the, the enemy is substantially high, on higher ground. And so that Reese and Paige can kind of shoot over Daniel. Uh, so again, another reason why it's important to have elevation for your artillery. If you don't have elevation for your artillery, then I think the other option is just to put your artillery at your flanks so that they can continue firing on the enemy uh, without being inhibited by the positioning of your troops. All right. So that's placement of artillery. Uh, coverage height or flank right now next option here uh, suppression counterfire defensive and offensive use of your artillery so let's focus on offensive first as you will see you have three options here in terms of uh, the shot that you can use solid shot is literally just that I love how we get this freezed here and get these guys firing he's already suffered 27 casualties um, sorry squirrel moment Solid shot gives you a substantial range all the way down here, and that's because that's uh, assuming these guys are in higher higher elevation. They obviously can't hit them, but that's because it's it's literally it's a solid round ball. It's a huge cannonball. It doesn't shatter when it hits the ground. Um, it basically rolls or gets stuck in the ground. Um, but it's just one big cannonball. I think, in my opinion, the best use of solid shot is to suppress or counter the enemy's artillery. How would you do that? So for example, Cushing is right here. I might take Tanner, Green, Dement, and Brown and focus their fire on Cushing using Solid Shot. If you do auto, usually the computer is going to auto with Solid Shot unless it is within shell shot range. But if you do Solid Shot, then what's going to happen is your four, these four uh, battalions, for example, are going to focus their fire on Cushing and what that will hopefully do is it's going to suppress or counter Cushing's use of his artillery. It's going to decrease the number that Cushing has. It's going to decrease the number of artillery he has there. It's going to distract him, hopefully, from your other brigades. And so he's going to be shooting at your artillery instead of your brigades. Uh, and then hopefully at some point actually knocks him out of the battle. And that's one less artillery battalion that the enemy has available to them. Why would you do that rather than trying to shoot at Webb, for example, right? Um, I think the best time to suppress enemy artillery fire is when you're preparing for an assault. So you're moving your troops around. Um, they're not actually your brigades are not actually engaged in heavy combat. Uh, maybe they're sitting back rebuilding their condition and morale. Then what you would do is you'd be doing the suppression or counter fire on their artillery, trying to knock as many of their artillery out in time for your big assault on the enemy. All right, so that's where I think suppression counter fire is best used, not during the major battle but kind of in the prelude of the battle. Again, there's different theories on that. That's just kind of how I like to use it. Offensive fire is, I think, best used when you are supporting a brigade currently engaged in combat, or brigades. So here you can see we'd be engaging with Daniel, Iverson, and Gordon. I think the best way to use artillery in this case is to provide shell canister fire from whichever artillery battalions I can actually get involved in the fight. So I might use Carrington and Garber and Shell and hit Zucker. Um, I'm assuming I can hit him. It's not really telling me whether I... Yeah, there we go. So right now they're turned this way. They would turn this way and they would be within Zucker, Zook's uh, firing range. And so they would hit, hit him with Shell. What does Shell do? It is a cannonball that when it hits the ground it shatters into a number of pieces. Uh, inflicting casualties on the enemy. I kind of compare it to like a, a landmine that's being projected into the air so that when it hits the ground it just shatters into a bunch of pieces. Um, obviously it has less range so you have to have your artillery in closer which usually means that you're probably going to be moving your artillery up like we are here in recent page along with your battalion or with your brigades as your brigades are moving forward. The risk to that is you're going to be potentially in open ground which means you might sustain heavier casualties from say enemy artillery that is using the suppression or counterfire theory of warfare on your artillery. So maybe Arnold here, instead of um, using a canister on Iverson who's coming in, might use his shell or solid shot on Reese and Page to try and just take these artillery out of the offensive. Um, here, sorry, let's do that. I would do shell there. And then I would take him, we would do shell and we would take him and we would do shell. So as you can see they can do shell all the way down here all the way to here so we're well within range 
And then I would also say, and I've noticed with the Confederates especially to be true, the closer your artillery is to the enemy, the more effective it is. So you don't necessarily want your your range to be here. You maybe want to like split the difference. Um, I would say you do want to be a little bit outside the infantry's firing range. So as you can see, this is about the range of an infantry brigade. The shell is further out than that, so you could probably, could probably back these guys up a little bit uh, and be outside of Zook's range. Because it looks like you could probably fire on my cannon, and uh, they, they, this would, these hundred nine hundred and sixty brigade would take your artillery out pretty freaking fast, uh, if not one volley, definitely two. All right, so that's the offensive use. One of the offensive ways to use artillery is to move them up along with the your brigades that line of attack and use them in a shell sort of formation. Um, you could either do it behind. So if I had like up here, maybe I have Louisiana here going down, and maybe I move these guys up a little bit as uh, Louisiana Tigers and Avery kind of move up the line. Uh, or I'd put these guys in between or on the flanks of my brigades and push shell into the into the, into the enemy. Um, so you can see an example here. So watch Page and Reese shooting to Zook. Boom. All right, so see there? See how it's breaking up into pieces? Now, they kind of overshot Zook, which usually you'll see is the case with artillery going to overshoot the enemy. Um, but as you can see here, it's all shattering around. Whereas, let's see if I can find a cannonball. So you got these guys firing this way. Notice here, see the single? Those are cannonballs. That's a solid shot right there. Uh, whereas these guys are shooting the shell. Um, okay, so they shot off their volleys. Let's see what damage they did. They killed 12 guys. He killed six. So that's actually pretty good for one volley for artillery is to do that. Uh, whereas Carrington, you know, he only had three and he's in better. He's on better ground than these two guys. Um, also, it matters too in terms of the number of stars that they have here. So one star means that they're the least um, trained up, I guess you'd say, led. This this captain's not that great, basically. Uh, whereas this captain is really good, three, and so that means he's going to be the most effective with his artillery. In shooting at the enemy. So like this one, you know, Paige, I might want to keep a little bit back because I don't want to risk losing him. Um, whereas Fry and Carter and, and Reese, maybe I want to get a little bit closer in um, to mitigate as much as possible the lack of leadership and a capability that they have. Uh, this is kind of a side thing. doesn't have to do with artillery, but it's still important. You want to keep your core commanders. You want to keep them within the range here so you can keep the morale up for Paige and so forth. Uh, and then finally, defensive use of artillery. What's the best defensive use of artillery? I kind of alluded to it a little bit already. One way is here, if I was Arnold, defensive use of artillery might be to do counter suppression fire on the enemy's artillery. And so I might take Arnold um, and maybe Cooper and shoot, you know, for him, Shell, for Cooper, Solid, uh, onto Reese. You maybe try and knock out one of those um, artillery uh, brigade or not brigades, battalions. Um, honestly though, again, my, my rule being, you know, I, I want to do like three or four to one when I'm doing that. I only have this one artillery here. I, I don't think shooting solid shot or shell into one artillery battalion is really going to make much of a difference. Instead, what I probably would want to do is use canister. So canister is your, your really, I think, your, your defensive option. Very rarely are you going to use this in offensive means. I think that really the only ways you could successfully use this in offensive means is if you can no kidding roll your your artillery up into the flank of the enemy and shoot off canister um, because they aren't able to basically fire back. You know, I think that's the, the one option. Because uh, notice here the range difference. So that's your canister versus your shell. Big difference there. Um, otherwise, you're going to be right up in the face of the enemy and they could charge you really quick. Uh, or they could shoot a volley into you and take out your artillery with that one volley. You'd be done. Um, so unless you're able to roll up your artillery into the flank with canister, the only other time you're probably going to want to be using canister in an offensive battle is if you feel like you're just right on the precipice of breaking the lines um, and you just got to do a couple of volleys of canister to, 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 to really turn the tide and, and make that final bit of difference, then maybe you do it. Uh, can canister is, is very lethal. I mean, you're going to... You think about it, you're pretty much shooting a bunch of tiny pieces of you know, heavy metal that's going to rip through people uh, at pretty much point-blank range um, into, as you can see, a mass of people. 
Uh, so canister can be very effective in the offensive sense if you're really thinking of a one and done. Like, hey, I'm pretty much sacrificing this this battalion here to, to get that done. Don't expect this guy to make it out of the fight if you're, if you're doing this offensively. Um, defensively, though, it can be significantly powerful and, and here's the way that I would suggest doing a uh, defensive use of your of your of your canister uh, and I, w I wish I could kind of show you this uh, I would do it where your artillery is back up here on say the ledge and I've got Louisiana Avery uh, just imagine this you know um, let's do this so imagine these two brigades are up front I'm taking heavy fire from Brooke they're pushing my line back you could use see look again that shell it's awesome see see it right here they're actually using Arnold they're using counter suppression on him and he's already knocked him pretty much out his morale's pretty much gone already so 44 uh, casualties he has 22 percent cover um, but that was from Arnold so that's a good use of his artillery there so that's a good example of what'll happen when you get too close uh, too close in um, also, too, you know, I was to say you probably use canister up against an enemy's artillery. Yeah, why not, right? Um, but over here, like if I was taking heavy casualties and Louisiana Tigers and Avery broke, you could actually use these guys as canister to kind of stop the um, the collapse of of your line. So if Louisiana and Avery were pulling back, you shoot some canister into the enemy. You then maybe have a reserve back here. You bring the reserve up as a counterattack. That's the best means I think you should do in terms of using your artillery. All right, so uh, with that, that's pretty much covers uh, use of artillery. Um, again, to summarize, we're talking about moving artillery. There's two ways to do it. You can either do it like we do these guys here, which they f this finalist, they're still getting set up. That's how long this is taken. Um, but with his shell, they could still hit these guys with shell. Notice they have 54% cover, so that's not too bad. Whereas Paige is pretty much in the, the wide open here. Um, placement of artillery so we want to try and pick them up on the hill or put them at the flanks of our brigades in support of an assault and then suppression counter fire Oof, he just look at that see right there hold on all right so see how it's kind of tracing there that's him using canister <laughs> canister on my my guys uh, and he's already done uh, 113 damage that number's gonna go down like really fast uh, I'm just going to charge. Let's make it fun. Um, defensive use, so solid shot, you know, or rather defensive use being mostly, I think, canister or shell. Um, using it to kind of, so see he's going to use his artillery here in a defensive way. Heh <laughs> or not. Suckers! I'd probably charge this guy too. i charge him. Screw it. See, fortunately, these guys are up on higher ground, so they were able, able to actually fire through. As you can see here, we lost a lot of artillery from that counter artillery. Uh, so he's, he did really well with his counter and suppression fire. Um, and then the offensive being, you know, shell or uh, canister in some instances, but typically shell and probably going to use shell in a way to support up with your brigades um, and, and go from there. So, All right, guys, so with that, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to throw them in there. Otherwise, I hope this video helped a little bit in figuring out how to use artillery. And uh, maybe you can kick some butt on some multiplayer. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.